Alright, what's up guys? Back here for um, another just getting started off building, coil building. We uh, did Clapton's and Twisted Wire already, Helix and Fuse Clapton's. So I think the next step would be Stagger Fuse Clapton's. Half Staggers and Stagger Fuse Clapton's. There's a lot of different ways to get spacing in your wires. There's the loop method. There's um, a couple different ways to do the loop method. There's parallel claptoning, and there's something that uh, you don't see much of, but um, I like to call it force fusing. And uh, I'm going to do two different variations of staggering right here. I'm going to do a half stagger, which is a little easier than a basic stagger fuse clapton. A half stagger would have one wire space clapped and, and then the other wire wouldn't be space clapped and, and then you fuse in the gaps and you get a half stagger and then I'm going to do a full stagger fuse clapped and for the half stagger which I'm going to do first I'm going to use the force fusing for the second one the stagger fuse clapped and I'm going to use a loop method I don't do parallel clapton on round wire because it does waste wire. There is stuff I do parallel clapton, but when doing round wire, I don't do it. So, to get started, I'm going to get some 26 gauge and stretch it out and get it straight. I'm going to need about 10 inches. I'm going to get another core ready. So I got two 26 gauge cores. <clears throat> now you could use any kind of Clapton wire to do these. I'm going to use 34. Not only is it going to be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing with it, but it's also, it's a good vape. Just like I told you with the Fuse Clapton's, um, I usually shoot for 26, 36 Fuse Clapton's, but uh, 34 gives you a little more heat. So I'm going to get one of my cores. I will be using a swivel. Actually, from this video out, I'm going to be using swivels. This is a fresh new roll, so I gotta get it open. Alright, so now with this force fusing, what you have to do, you wanna get it on your swivel. So I take my 26 gauge core, I bend it on my swivel, I grab that bend with my needle noses and I twist my swivel three times. Let me close my swivel up. And then I'm gonna take the other end of my 26, I got a 90 in it, and put it in my drill. I'm going to take my 34 gauge and I'm just going to shove it into my drill where there's a space. And I'm going to start clapping. I'm going to do just a basic clapping halfway down this wire. So I have eight and a half inches roughly to play with here. I'm going to clap them down four inches.
there it is, a little more than four inches Clapton down. Just a basic Clapton. I'm going to snip. I'm going to leave about an inch on and snip this wire. I'm going to grab that inch. I'm going to put my drill in reverse and spin. So what's happening here is I'm holding the clapton, but the core is spinning. So it's loosening up this clapton here. So this clapton will slide all the way down this 26 gauge, just like that. I want it loose on there. <clears throat> Gonna loosen my drill. I'm going to get my other 26 gauge, it's already got a 90 in it, and I'm going to take the 34, and I'm going to wrap it around both of them. If there wasn't enough in your drill, just get another piece of 34 and wrap it around both of them. This little inch, I can cut off now, I'm done with that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get both cores and put them in my drill. Alright. Now I'm going to hook the core that hasn't been on the swivel yet up to the swivel just loosely. I don't need to get that on there tight. Just tight enough that it doesn't fly off and hit you in the face or anything. Alright, so I kind of put like one loop around it there. This way when I spin it, it doesn't fly off. <clears throat> I'm going to take my Clapton. I'm going to make sure it stays down here at the drill. And I'm just going to give it a little stretch. I'm going to go three quarters down the core. So I pulled it to like here, let it go. That's it. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my 34. You could actually use any gauge to space to um, Clapton in these spaces. I'm going to use the same one though, <clears throat> same gauge. I'm going to get my 34, put it in between my two wires, and bring it down to my drill chuck. I'm going to hand wrap it around my cores right here just to get it anchored. And now, I'm going to make sure my drill is in the same direction, spinning the same direction as I did my Clapton. And I'm going to have a little bit of tension and Clapton. When I Clapton, it's going to fall into the gaps of the one Clapton wire. Let me just cut this off here. going to force the clap to open up and it's just going to fall in there. Mess up, you could go back. If it made too big of a space, you can compress that space by just pulling your clap in back. I'm going to get a close-up of this as it's happening. Alright, here we are.
So let me just finish this wire up. Now this also works on a stagger fuse Clapton. I just wanted to show you with the half stagger. And there is something else to know about this kind of technique. So as you go along, these wires are going to twist, and when they twist, the clap, the um, cores actually hold this from hold this Clapton from moving any fur any further. So that's why I said don't put this core on here permanently because you're going to need to take it off. And at this point, the first time I take it off, what I do is I hook it on there again just temporarily. I get one of my hair clips <clears throat> and just clip it on there because I may have to remove it again. I usually do. holding a good amount of pressure on this. I see that I'm a little twisted up again right here. Untwist it. Get it back on my swivel. Clamp it again. So I started off with four inches of a Clapton, but when all is said and done, it doubles in size. So now I got seven and a half, enough for two coil. I'm going to snip my 34 off. And one more thing to do. I'm going to snip this. Last thing to do is to get these twists out. I'm going to grab my wire, put my drill in reverse, pull tension back. This got untwisted, but down here it didn't. This isn't twisted right here bad, so I'm going to grab my wire right here where the twisting starts to be bad. Put my drill in reverse and untwist. Once you get most of the twist out, you should be good if you want to get it even straighter. Just like I showed earlier, you can do it by hand in an earlier video, I should say. And I'll show you this wire close up when we do the uh, stagger fuse clap, and I'll show you what this thing looks like close up. Alright, a couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, I was mentioning videos, what build videos to watch by other uh, channels. Um, another good one is Own Boy Josh's channel. I mean, that and Coil Wars. Watching that, you can get a lot of information out of that. He does awesome videos. I know when I was starting out and I uh, was on YouTube watching videos, I came across own boy Josh, and uh, his channel did help me out. He has lots of good information over there. That actual force fusing is something that he has covered on his channel. Uh, he has a video called the 
like the easiest stack or fuse clapping ever and it's basically the same concept as what I just did there so that's good to watch and another thing I wanted to mention is uh, we talked about what wires you could use to get started now um, when you're just getting started you you're gonna be running through wire you're gonna be making mistakes um, go for cheaper wire go buy your the cheapest wire you can get with exception to ribbon wire if you're gonna buy ribbon wire get nice ribbon wire because bad ribbon wire is very hard to work with and it's gonna it's it's a fail right from the jump so um, get cheap wire but you know go to pure atomist or a good company for uh, your ribbon But then again, Pure Atomist isn't, in my opinion, Pure Atomist isn't expensive for regular wire either. But uh, there's companies that are cheaper. So just keep that in mind. You're going to be going through wire, get the cheaper stuff. Alright, so now we're going to do a Stagger Fuse Clapton. Basic Stagger Fuse Clapton. So, once I can get a spool. Of 36 that isn't uh, exploded. Another new spool. So I'm going to do a 2636 Stagger Fuse Clapton. You could really use any cores and any Clapton for these. 2636 is going to be probably one of the most common ones you're going to see. And it's talking about stagger fuse claptons. Stagger fuse claptons vape great. Um, they are a lot like fuse claptons. They're a little angrier. A little bit more angry of a coil. I think they hold a little more juice than a fuse clapton would. I like my stagger fuse claptons in like my RTAs, RDTAs, stuff like that. But they look awesome. It's one of the cooler concepts that's came out, and it's definitely, um, definitely a step up when you're talking about coil building. It's uh. When you know how to do a stagger fuse clapton, it's going to open you up to so many other builds. So this is a very important build, um, and this build was the original concept comes comes from Squid Dude. Um, so let me show you how it's done. I'm going to get some 26 gauge cores again. This time I'm going to make two 12 inch cores. I'm shooting for a dual coil. You could do this one of two ways. You could do two wires. Or you could do one wire and cut it in half. And in fact, scratch that because I could show you more important, uh, more important um, tips if I did one long one. So that's what I'm going to do. So scratch the 12 inch pieces. Let's go straight for. Um, let's go straight for. A 16 inch 26 gauge core. So, like I said, there's another, the first concept on how to get this staggered wire was to parallel clapton it and remove one of the clapton. So, you'd be clapton in two wires on and removing one, and that would leave your space. This wastes a lot of wire. And um, it's actually a little harder to do than the loop method. So with the loop method, how they started off doing it was they would just have the loop. And they would use their finger 
to hold weight on it and hold the spool in the same hand. And this is something we used to do before somebody figured out you could just put weight on the loop and uh, you don't have to hold the loop as well, you could just hold the spool. So what you're going to need is you're going to need something to weigh your loop down. This is what I use. You could use fishing weights. I use this heavy top cap. It's a comp life top cap. It's a, a 24 outside diameter, 22 inside, and it's just very heavy. So I would say try your heaviest cap first and then uh, go from there. I know own boy Josh, while we, uh, while we were talking about him, he uses the uh, recoil, the recoil RDA. So I'm going to take about a 10 inch piece of 36 gauge, because that's how big I want my spaces. I put that 36 gauge through my cap. So both these concepts, the loop method and the force fusing, is something that I use later on in more intricate builds. So they're both things I wanted to go over, because you're going to see me do both of these in uh, bigger and better builds. So I just tied a knot in it, and now I got a loop. that aside. I always say my loop, and this is important, my loop is about the size of my wrist here. So if I take my loop, I do that, that's how long my loop is. Some people do them short, some people do them long. I figured for me, this is like the best size. I like this size the best. Now I'm going to take my 26 gauge core, I'm going to bend it on my swivel, grab it with my needle nose, and twist. I'm going to get the other end, I have a 90 bent in it already. So I want to make that 90 a little bigger. Then I'm going to grab my 36. I'm going to grab my 36. And I'm going to hand wrap it. around my 26, leaving gaps when I wrap it. I'm not wrapping it tight, I'm leaving spacing. I'm going to come up and I'm going to wrap it around the 90 degree angle that's going to go into my drill. Alright, so I did about 10 wraps on it, three of which are on my 90 here. Then before I install it on my drill, I'm going to get my loop, and I'm going to just put it on the end there. Get my 90 in my drill, and close it up. So now I got my loop. Now what I want to do is if you could see right here, you could see my wraps. There's one wrap, two wrap, three wrap. I want to put my loop right after or right before. No, I should say right behind 
right behind the last wrap there. So I take it and I put it in between the last two, making sure it's behind the last one. I'll get a close up of this. And then I press them together a little bit. So there it is, my loop is right behind the wire coming into my 26. So now when I start clapping, what's going to happen is my loop's going to leave a space behind. If it doesn't leave a space behind, go back, make sure it does. I'm going to close this loop up a little bit. leaves a perfect space there. Now a couple things you want to keep in mind is the angle you're holding and the tension you're holding. First of all the angle you're holding. The angle you're holding you want it to be as close to a 90 as possible. If you go too much you're gonna make big gaps. If you go too little your loops gonna jump over because you're making less less of a gap or almost no gap. So you want to keep it on a 90, especially if you want to have a nice, consistent, clean spacing. And spacing is very important when you're talking about these stagger fuse Claptons. Next is the tension. You want to make sure that this wire stays straight. You don't want it to bend down because you're not holding the drill away from the swivel. You want to have good tension on it. So you want to make this wire as tight as possible so it doesn't hump down and mess up your spacing. problem I'm having now is it looks like my weight isn't heavy enough for this for this 36 gauge. I was using this weight for 40 gauge but since 36 is a little stronger of a wire it looks like I need a little more weight. So a couple things I do is I have like clips and I can just add them on here and that gives you a little more weight. If you need a lot more weight you could take something like your tweezers. You can stick it through the hole here and that gives you more weight. So I'm going to try that out.
so much better and once you get the feeling down the angle you could go down that wire pretty quickly <laughs> all right let me show you what it looks like close up 2636 spaced with the perfect 36 gauge space in the uh, in between each clapton let me cut this in half and uh, I'll show you what they look like when they're together. All right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get my loop, get it out of the way. I'm gonna get this wire. I'm not gonna snip it actually. I'm just gonna take it off my swivel. I want to make sure I don't grab here. Because if I go like this with the wire, the clapton's going to move and it's going to mess up my spaces. So you really don't want to touch this as much as you can. I'm going to get this wire out of the drill now. And now, when I started, the beginning was a little, a little janky when I started because my weight wasn't proper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it at the clean part and I'm going to bend over here so I know from here to there is all clean wire. Then I'm going to find the center of my clean wire. So I got 12 inches to there and then roughly three more inches. So six, seven and a half inches would be halfway. So I'm going to go at seven and a half inches with my clean wire, and I'm going to cut it. Now what you don't want to do is take this and flip it over. Don't do that. I just cut it there. I want to either just slide this down here, or I want to slide that one up here. It doesn't matter. Just don't flip either of them. So I get both of them here. I can make this a little shorter here. And let me show you what they look like side by side. This is what you're looking for. If you have a macro lens, that would be great. It's a good tool to have to check your, uh, your wires close up, especially during the prep. So the spacings look dead on. And what I'm going to do is just fuse in the gaps and tie these two together. It ends up looking pretty cool. I just go all the way down my wire and make sure everything's good. Alright, now my next step is to fuse these together. So, I'm going to take the one wire that doesn't have a 90 in it, and I'm carefully going to grab my needle noses and put a 90 into it. Then I'm going to get both wires. I'm going to get my 36 gauge spool. and wrap them two wires together, just by hand, just to get myself started. Get my drill, insert it in my drill. And then the longer of the two is the one that was already in the swivel. So I'm going to take that one and put it back in the swivel. I'm going to take these two wires 
and I'm going to use my hair clip again. I'm going to clip them two together. I've seen people do it where they're just free, but um, just so it doesn't hit you in the face, I like to do that. Especially if you do these fast, you don't want that thing swinging around. Alright, and then I'm going to start off slow and clap them right into the gaps. Same deal as the half stagger. You can get the twists out. While going down that wire, if you have any problems, reverse and fix them. Put my drill in reverse, hold, pull pressure. Most of the twists came out. Bad stuff off. Let's look at these wires close up, side by side. In fact, no. I bet we do this. Let me wrap some coils up. I'm going to get my 3 millimeter. I'm going to wrap a coil up of each, and then I'm going to show you what they look like coiled up, and what they look like as wire pouring each of them. So this one... Is my straight up stagger fuse clapping. So just like I wrap all my coils, I get my pliers.
And actually, let me show you how I, um, if I wanted to wrap it the opposite way. So kind of, I guess you would call it a left-handed wrap. I do the same thing, but I grab my pliers and I put the wire towards me. Then I put the rod underneath. So sometimes this could help when you're mounting like two coils on the same side and you want the leads to come out from the bottom close together, if that makes any sense. But this is how you easily wrap left-handed. I guess kind of what I'm saying here is I got a left-handed and right-handed wrap so when I put them together if I wanted to put that in a three post it would be a lot easier because both of these wires are coming out the bottom in the middle so there's the half stagger There's the half stagger. And there's the full stagger fuse clapton. Half. Full. the wire porns right there. Half on the left, full on the right. Thanks for watching guys. I gotta keep this video nice and quick so I can get it in HD. Um, go follow me on Instagram and divine 83 Go check out the Resistance Crew. Check out Pure Atomist Wire and Zombie E Liquid. My next video is going to be Staple Wire. Alright, guys, thank you.